So you you were a Harry Potter fan yourself, and you know Emma Watson quite well. So how was how amazing was it uh, to be part of a of a parallel Harry Potter universe? I'd say from a, on a scale from one to amazing, it was amazing uh, to be a part of this world. Um, this is a world I have loved uh, since I was very young, and in a sense, when we really love a, a story, we all step into it. Mm. Um, but I've gotten to do that in a very literal way, and uh, it makes me giddy every time I, I remember uh, that that I've I've gotten to do that. You know, uh, the fans wanted to know if you were ever uh, a Harry Potter in a Harry Potter film itself. Which character would you have loved to play? Um, Bellatrix Lestrange. I can't believe I said that. Luna Lovegood. I don't know why I'm thinking female characters. Um, but why not, right? Exactly, why not? Uh, a house elf, maybe Dobby. Dobby the house elf. I think that could be great. Put some ears on me. I'm ready to go. Mm. Absolutely. I could go on like this yeah, exactly, forever. Exactly. Yeah. It, it shows, me, it shows that now. you... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, you, you kind of dive into the world when you're on sets like that. Is it the right impression? Is there less visual effects than you would expect? You mean when we're on yeah, the day, yeah. when we're making the movie? Um, I don't know. For me, a lot of my material in this film is just conversations between two people. Uh, a lot of the other actors has a, had a lot more to sort of fill in the blanks of in their mind. But I will say that what I did do in terms of work with the visual effects department was really collaborative. And they were always trying to let us know what things would look like. And they were watching our performances also to inform how they were going to make these images. Uh, and so it was, yeah. It was also, we were given an incredible amount of material in terms of there were paintings and drawings and you know, uh, graphic uh, interpretations and pre-visualizations of what things were gonna look like. You know, often when you do some sort of action scene that involves a lot of unseen, imaginary, soon-to-be computer graphically generated mm -hmm. elements, they will show you what's almost like, it almost looks like when you get to the end of a level in a video game and they play like a little okay. cinematic sequence. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like that. It's like a little cinematic sequence done with computer graphics that, sh it's called a previs, and it shows you what the scene is gonna look like. So that way you can have a, a blueprint for your imagination so that everyone can kind of have a common idea of what we're doing here. Yeah, you know? so exciting. Because remember on the playground yeah, when yeah. two people would disagree about what you're imagining? You're like, no, my, like my, my spell penetrated your shield. And you'd be like, no, your spell didn't penetrate my shield. You're being stupid. Uh, uh, the previs is, is to avoid that dynamic amongst adult actors. Exactly. Who would, by the way, have that same argument in the same tone of voice. <laughs> the fans wanted to know if you can tell us anything about Justice League and The Flash. If I can tell you and yeah. I mean, it's going to be freaking awesome and you should be super excited and go <laughs> yeah. see it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, otherwise, you know, I'm... Sworn I, to secrecy. Yeah, I sit on this mountain of secrets and you'd have to know how to ask the right question with the right keywords. And with the right weapons. To really ply something. <laughs> yeah, exactly, with the right torture instruments. Uh, <laughs> ah, 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 torture. Funny. Exactly. Well, yeah. No. In, in, in no. some parallel universes, it's not funny. It's not funny, but even things that aren't funny can be funny sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs>